Hello and welcome to The Harbor. My name is Brian. I am the pastor of The Harbor and I'm so grateful that you are joining us tonight. Tonight we are gonna be talking about the power of our words. And I really believe that our words have power to speak life, to speak death. And so this is gonna be something that's gonna be absolutely incredible and it's gonna be something that you're gonna want to check out. Uh, Before we dive in though, I wanna share a few things uh, with you. First off, uh, I want to kind of talk a little bit about uh, reopening. You know, a lot of uh, us or a lot of you have been asking me and asking, you know, different people, uh, when are we going to reopen? When are we going to get back to normal? And uh, a couple thoughts on that. First off, uh, I want to say that right now, um, we don't necessarily have a specific date for when we are going to reopen and uh, kind of gather back together um, as a, a community in person. Um, the reason is, um, obviously, on the one hand, we so desperately want to be back together. Um, I miss everyone so much. I miss worshiping in a room with people. Uh, I miss hugs. I miss all of it. Uh, but at the same time, we want to operate with wisdom in our community, and we want to love our community well. And part of that is the fact that when we gather a lot of people together at this moment, we want to figure out how we can best do that in wisdom and to protect the most possible people. So please just be in prayer for us, be in prayer for our pastoral leadership team and the elders of our church as we continue to make these decisions. But I also want to encourage us that really we have not closed. Like we have stopped certain things, but uh, we have not closed. Uh, ministry is still happening. And I really believe that God is doing such amazing things in these times and in these days. And so I wanna encourage you to continue to pray, continue to press into God, continue to ask, seek, and knock, because God is doing great things in these moments that we're in and in these days that we're in. And so let's have hearts of faith and let's have a perspective that even though things are different, we're not closed, we have not shut down. So that's the first thing I wanted to say is just a little addressing of the fact of when we'll reopen. Please just continue to be praying for us on that. Uh, The second thing I want to say is keep connected to We Are The Harbor on Instagram. That's where all of our content is. That's where all of our information is. So give us a follow there. We're trying to bring encouragement. We're trying to bring some fun. And we'll keep you posted there about everything that's going on. And then last but not least, tonight, Thursday night after the harbor, uh, immediately afterwards, we are going to be on Instagram Live. And uh, it's gonna be a really amazing time. Uh, My good friend Jackson is going to be hosting it, Jackson Edwards. Uh, Maybe his son Spencer will make an appearance, we'll see. But he is gonna be uh, doing an interview with our very own Jordan Wallace. If you know Jordan, you know that he is one of the great legends of the harbor. We absolutely love whatever uh, he shares. And he's gonna be sharing a little bit about how he lives a life that invites people towards Jesus. So you're gonna wanna check that out immediately after the harbor. But now we're gonna have uh, some time of worship and then we're gonna have a teaching from Tara in our series on James. So let's pray and then we'll worship. God, we thank you so much for this day. We are grateful to be able to gather and worship even though we're spread out across the community. We believe that you are doing mighty things and great things in this time. We believe that you are bringing about revival and that we're gonna see many people saved, many people encouraged, many people uplifted in these days. So please continue to work and move and we are expectant tonight as we worship and as we receive the word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's worship.
Lord, we come before you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are good. You are constant in the chaos. And so, Lord, we just give this time to you. We ask that you would be here with us, that you would speak through your word. Um, We just ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome to the harbor. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Tara, and I'm on staff here. I'm super excited to be here um, as we continue on in our series, Life According to James. As a quick recap, the last few weeks Kevin taught. And uh, in chapter one, he taught that trials reveal our faith and revelation begs for action. And the second week, he taught mercy over judgment and that works out of the breath. This week, we are in chapter three. And uh, James is my favorite book of the Bible. If you've heard me talk before, you probably know that I went to Texas to do an internship a number of years ago, and each of us was given a mentor for the year. And there was about a group of 12 of us, and a few of us were a little more sarcastic than the others. And so our mentor told us that any time that we were like mean sarcastic, we would have to read the book of James. I read the book of James a lot that year, um, which is kind of fitting because I saw a tweet the other day that shared that the word sarcasm drives from the Greek word sarcasm, which literally means to tear or strip the flesh off, which, you know, sometimes our words, we can do just that. So the title of the teaching tonight is actually called Loose Lips, Sink Ships. Now, if you're anything like me, you've heard this phrase before, but I didn't know where it came from. So I did a little digging and found that it comes from World War II propaganda posters. Um, And it was to remind folks to beware of unguarded talk. It was a wartime expression um, meant to warn people in the military as well as ordinary citizens to watch what they say because unguarded talk could give the enemy useful information to sink their ships. So how does that apply here? We'll get there. But let's dive in. So if you read through chapter 3, verses 1 through 12 are all about teaching and the tongue. And and chapter 3 actually starts out with a scary warning for those who teach. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. As the person who's sitting up here teaching James 3, that's pretty sobering. And a lot of times I feel like we or folks take on this responsibility of teaching without considering the extent of the accountability that comes with it. Uh, In Luke 12, 48, Jesus warned, when someone has been given much, much will be required in return. And when someone has been entrusted with much, more will be required. If we go back to the second verse of James 3, he does acknowledge that we all stumble and fall and we all make mistakes. This makes that greater accountability for the teachers more sobering in light of the weaknesses that we all have. So keep that in mind because we're going to come back to that. We're going to move on to verses 3 through 6, which say, We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. Those verses are super intense. And I love the imagery. I'm a very visual person. um, And and I've taught James a number of times, but I'm not a horse person. So this is probably the first time that I actually looked up what the bit for a horse looks like. Um, And seeing the metal in the mouth with the rings and the reins, uh, it made a lot of sense how such a small piece could help us control the whole horse. Um, And likewise, if you've ever seen a rudder on a cruise ship, it's really tiny compared to the whole ship, and yet it helps direct the ship. David Guzik says, James points us towards having the Spirit of God working through the new man, set directing hands on the reins and the rudder that is our tongue. 
Additionally, in those verses, James talks about how our tongue is a flame of fire. And the first two illustrations talk about how we can control big things with small components. And this one is talking about how we can, a small spark can light a huge forest fire. Which leads us to point one, that our words matter. Our words matter. I'm going to go a little extreme here, but consider the Holocaust. The slaughter of six million Jews started with private conversations that turned into public speeches. And those words carried weight. Like I said, it's an extreme example, but think about the things that have been spoken over your life. There have been some pretty harsh things spoken over me that will pop into my mind from like now and then. And I have to fight them off and choose not to believe them years later even. In the same way, there have been some really incredibly encouraging things spoken over me that I've chosen to write down that will come to mind now and then, um, but years later, they are still in my mind. So just like in the wartime phrase, loose lips sink ships, meant unguarded talk may give useful information to the enemy, for us, it's that our unguarded talk may give the enemy a foothold. In Proverbs 18.21, it says that the tongue can bring death or life, and those who love to talk will reap the consequences. In Psalm 64, David talks about his enemies aiming their bitter words like arrows. Again, I love that imagery. Uh, Verses 7 through 12, it says, People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish. I'm not going to lie, when I read this, I thought about Tiger King. Um, But no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does the spring of water bubble out both fresh and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. So considering that, could you imagine how confusing and troublesome it would be if every time you turned on your kitchen faucet, you never knew if you were going to get fresh or salt water? So considering that, point number two, as Christ followers, we need to operate with integrity. And this looks like trying to honor God with our speech at all times. It looks like doing the right thing, even when no one is looking. And it means being the same person wherever you go. Are people getting fresh or salt water with you? Are they getting both? We can't be people who say inappropriate things or cuss like sailors behind closed doors and then seem pious and holy in front of others. Blessing the Lord in one breath, cursing his people in the next. People are made in his image, so it's almost as bad as cursing the Lord himself. I once heard a leader say that inconsistency is a mortal wound on the soul, and I would agree. When we bless the Lord in one breath and curse the people in the next, the inconsistency surely is confusing for those who aren't walking with the Lord. So very seriously, our loose lips or untamed tongues can sink ships And sometimes those ships are other people. We're going to move on to verses 13 through 16. If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. Which leads us to point three. Wisdom shows us how to live. Wisdom shows us how to live. If you remember, at the beginning of James 3, James addresses the teachers on how they should speak. Here he is addressing how they should live. The word wise that he uses in verse 13, the Greek is sophos, which in Jewish culture meant the teacher, the scribe, or the rabbi. And and they're asking them to prove it by living an honorable life. Wisdom is not just head knowledge. uh, It's also when we live it out. And verse 13 says that humility comes from wisdom. But some translations say meekness of wisdom. And if you contrast that with verse 14, 
which talks about bitter jealousy and selfish ambition, it's the complete opposite. Verse 14 also says it, that such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Continuing on our last paragraph, verses 17 through 18 says, But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. So essentially what it's saying is that godly wisdom is pure in both motive and attitude. It offers grace and kindness. It acts with sweet reasonableness. It is not stubborn or obstinate. It extends a generous hand full of mercy. It produces good fruit. It shows no favoritism. It never wears a mask. And those who plant seeds of peace will reap righteousness, which is right standing with God. So as we close out, I want to challenge you all with these three things, especially in these difficult times. It's really just a recap of the points that we just made. Number one, remember our words matter. Loose lips or untamed tongues do sink ships, and sometimes those ships are people. Number two, as Christ followers, we must operate with integrity. Number three, wisdom shows us how to live. In this, we're we're just scraping the surface of James 3. I would encourage you to take the time to dive in deep for yourself. Um, It is all of James. It's an excellent book, and you will get a lot out of it. So I'll leave you with that. Let's, Let's just go ahead and pray. God, we just come before you, and we are humbled by your words. God, challenged by your words. God, I just pray that these things in here, um, man, that we would be able to walk them out, Lord, that you would give us the grace to do so, um, and that we would have mercy when others do not. And so, God, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for the way that you move in our lives, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I lift my hands to the highest of all as I draw near. Surrender my life to your promise, O oh God, because there is no other. So I
Man, I'm just so thankful for uh, that teaching from Tara. You know, God has been speaking a lot to my heart and to my life about the power of words. And you know, I think a lot of times, you know, our, our words reveal what's in our heart. And so, so often we, we, can, we, can, we can really be revealed as being a different type of person than we think we are by our words. But also what's crazy is, as, as Tara taught, like our words actually have the power to steer. And so we can use our words to transform our life as well. And man, I'm just thankful that for God's word and the, the power of it, I'm thankful for just an incredible message from Tara. So Tara, thanks so much for bringing that. And man, I hope that you're doing well. Um, you know, as, as we've said every week, this is just a very strange time. And we always just want to encourage you to reach out if you need anything, whether it would be prayer or whatever else. Um, right now, I wanna encourage you to head over to our Instagram. Um, Jackson is going to be live on there with uh, my guy, Jordan Wallace. And uh, we're gonna be talking about this idea of a life that invites. It's gonna be a fun time. I'm sure that I'm going to laugh and I know you will as well. And I think God's gonna speak to you as we continue uh, just in this time. We love you so much, and we will see you next Thursday. God bless you.